My name is Wanga. Um, I'm a mom. I'm also married. I'm 38 years old. I live in Cape Town in the southern suburbs. Um, I work in the field of public health um, as an academic or researcher. Um, the lockdown was... I still can't put it into words, the impact of it on my life pers personally, but just generally what the pandemic has, has done. Um, you know, generally in, in this country and the world, but even more specifically in the lives of people that I know very personally, that I care about in my own life, um, I think it's touched everyone. Um, some people have called the, you know, COVID-19 the great equalizer. I don't know if it, if it is the great equalizer because the impact that it's had on people has it has been differential you know it's been determined by one social standing um where they fit in the socio-economic strata and in a country like ours which is highly unequal and then especially here in cape town which has to be one of the most unequal places on earth the impact has definitely been hasn't been the same for everyone um, and so even as I share my own experience of the pandemic and, and the lockdown, I'm mindful that um, we've not all been impacted similarly and that I've been in the lucky category by virtue of where I live, what I do, um, you know, that I'm a middle class person with a job that affords me um, financial security first of all but that enables me to continue to earn a living without having to expose myself to the virus um, and so you know somebody said I read something about an article actually at the start of the pandemic someone was saying um, we may all be in the same storm but we're certainly not all um we're not in the same boat so i think i'm I, i'm it's true and i straddle that life well the two worlds in a sense because um you know i have family i have very close people who 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 fall on the other side of the spectrum that's been dealt an unfair hand by this pandemic, by virtue of who they are, where they live, what they're able to access, the degree to which they're able to protect themselves. So I think that's important to keep in mind. And, and so when I tell my own, when I think about my experience, I'm, I'm mindful of that. Um, that said, it did, as I said, I, I find it very hard to describe um, how the lockdown impacted me. Our youngest is four. Um, he's very feisty, very huge amounts of energy, you know, and he's like, he's like a puppy. He wants to be out there. He's outdoorsy. You cannot keep him inside. You can't contain him. And so certainly the beginning of the lockdown, um, level five and four were very difficult for me. My husband is a frontline worker, and so he essentially never had lockdown. He was at work in the hospital day in, day out. Um, and so I was here at home holding the fort um, and, and, and looking after four children with ages ranging from 13, from four to 13, um, and different grades as well at school, from preschool to grade seven, and um, it, it was very difficult. Homeschooling and trying to juggle homeschooling with my own work was just nothing like I've ever, ever experienced in my life. And something that I hope to never experience <laughs> too. Um, 
you know, when I would tell, when I would talk about what the lockdown was like for me, as we were coming out of it around September, October, I would actually cry when talking about it because it had just been so hard. And I, I said to a friend, I felt like I had PTSD from it. Um, I'd kept going during those months without really thinking about it, but I realized coming out of it that it had a huge, huge, I mean, I realized while I was in it, um, you know, trying to balance work. Um, I, I created schedules for the children, different, you know, made to meet their different educational needs and to allow me to, to, to meet my own work, um, you know, objectives and, and the goals that I would set each day. Um, and it was just, I moved from feeling like I was focusing too much on work and giving the children too little attention. And sometimes that pendulum would swing the other way. I would feel I'm paying too much attention to the kids, too little. So the constant stress, a state of anxiety that I was in, um, and, and I, you know, so my, my, the type of work that I do allows me the privilege of working from home. Even before the pandemic, I had that privilege. But it was different then because the kids would be at school and I had help inside the house. And so I could shut myself off in my little home office and work away with no interruption. Um, and this was, so the, what, the, what the lockdown did was to then remove that boundary that I had that separation of, of home life from work life. And yeah, I don't think I cope very well <laughs> if I look back on it. And um, it did re introduce some um, strain in, in my relationship with my partner initially. It took a while for us to sort of, um, in a sense, establish a, 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 a kind of system that worked for both of us. I felt that he didn't really understand what how crazy it was to be here with the kids during the day with a full-time job and looking after them, all of them with their different needs, um, in a context where I couldn't take them anywhere. We all had to be inside here. We had to be with, in, you know, in the home. And I had my full-time job. Um, I felt that he didn't fully understand that at first, and he felt that I didn't understand what it was like to be a frontline worker, to to face daily the danger of catching the virus, um, you know, in a hospital setting. And I'm sure we were both right in our own way, in, in our perception of the one not fully understanding where the other, what the other was going through. So I certainly felt that it was a lonely time for me in some respects. I had the children and I'm very glad and um, grateful that I had them to go through that time period with. Um, but I just, I think not being able to see another adult for the whole day and my partner works very long hours um, and just having, you know, the kids um, here was, but and also just feeling like no one could really understand what I was going through. Friends and other family members, you know, had partners where they were locked down together, so they could take shifts, they could swap, they could help each other. I didn't really have anyone who had my experience, who was a partner to a frontline worker, who left, you know, who had to go off and work while leaving them to also do their own work and look after the children. I think that was a unique experience. Um, but, you know, we had to talk through it um, and try to find ways of taking care of ourselves and of taking care of each other, my partner and I, um, and of also reassuring the children and being there for them as well because they were affected. Um, and our youngest has an underlying condition, so we were very worried about him getting the virus and as such, all of the children went back to school in October, which meant that I had a, a much longer hard lockdown than anyone else, than most people that I knew. 
and not by anyone else, but certainly more by in most people that I knew in, in my circle. And that made it really difficult. Um, and so now my fear has been that, uh, going back to that place again, <laughs> you know, um, I've suffered family losses, um, which were very um, distressing and shocking. Um, I've had friends lose family members, I've lost colleagues. Um, it's been devastating, the impact of it. So when I think of it in terms of the loss of life and people losing their livelihoods, their incomes, even their savings because of, of the pandemic, I'm grateful and, and I feel that with you know, my family um, has been dealt a better hand. So I am grateful.